Welcome to the Clan! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. This podcast exists because we want you to win, and leverage is what's required for you to get that W up on the board. You're going to need to bring a book of business. You're going to have to have a reputation. It's not going to be just about the art. It's got to be about the business, too, and the business that you've already done. What is leverage, you ask? It's a strategic advantage. It's the power to act effectively. And this is why we called it the CLIMB, C-L-I-M-B, creating leverage in the music business. That is awesome. Um, that an acronym there is produced by my good friend, co-host, and supreme lyricist, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And Brent helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, do business like a pro, and then he connects you to the pros. So you can find Brent super easy at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. Hey, and I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. They help you find your sound. They help you grow your audience so you can become the artist that everybody loves so you can get paid. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at daredevilproduction.com. That's production, singular, no S, and there is no S because we all know why. There is no other Johnny D. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people that are like, oh, God. God. Oh, sure. No S. Woo. There's not an army of them out there. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing all right, man. How all you right. doing, Johnny? I'm doing great, man. Once again, we're in front of each other. I like this. I don't mm. ever want this to change. I, I, oh, I, I, I miss your face a lot less now that I get to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, familiarity does bring content. <laughs> I miss you a lot more now that I see you. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> that just filled my well for the day. Oh my gosh. Well, today, <laughs> man, we're going to talk about one of the cardinal sins of indie artists when it comes to marketing. And mm-hmm. frankly, I'm seeing major labels do this too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm going to touch on a couple ways that they're doing it. Um, and this is, when you start to get your head around this, it's going to change your world. It's going to change your, your momentum. You're going to start to see results mm-hmm. and uh, and things are going to start to happen for you. So, awesome. um, But before we get to to that let's yes. take care of a little business. business that's right um the climb community mm-hmm. we got it it's on facebook we want you to join it just go search for the climb community ask to be let in we let everybody in and um just be be good boys and girls or we're roadhouse you will kick mm-hmm. you out um make sure that you share this if you like this if you're listening to multiple episodes and they're and they're resonating with you then there's somebody that you know in your artist community wherever you are in whatever corner of the world that you are that could use this too and that could benefit from it Mm -hmm. uh turn them on to it let them know that 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 helps us spread the gospel take 30 seconds leave a rating and review on itunes uh, it helps us. It's social proof. It, it means to people who are from the outside looking in, who just maybe heard about us, they look at, they read those reviews, and they find out this this is legit, this is cool, people are learning something, it's going to be worth my time. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Mm-hmm. Just get that podcast episode on Tuesday right into your phone or the mini sods on Friday. It'll just pop right in there. You don't got to worry about anything. It's right there just magically for you to consume in the morning. Right? Mm, love it. Love it. All right. Um, so let's get down to business. The, the, the difference, the reason I'm calling this the difference between radio and online marketing is because, mm. um, you know, we, there's there's artists that we got turned on to that, that made us want to become Artist, yeah. Like, who was it that made you, made you want to become a writer? Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks just blew your mind. Just that's when I just, I mean, I listened to music. But that's when I just fell in love with music, and I'm like, I want to, yeah, I want to write songs for Garth, kind of thing. Yeah, heck, heck yeah, man. And and I mean, uh, for me, it's like you know Van Halen and Jesus mm. Priest. I was like, what is yeah. that? Like, whoa! Yeah, that was cool, too, but that was a, just another planet. Yeah, that was my planet. That was, yeah. <laughs> that was my that was planet. Not, I was not thinking, I can do that. <laughs> um, so, I, the, here's the thing, man. We're, we're People listen to this podcast, you obviously want to learn. You're obviously interested in self-improvement, and that makes you intelligent. And intelligent people, we want to recreate the methods in which we are marketed to. How did you find out about Garth Brooks? Man, I wasn't... Actually, for me, it was... 
somebody gave me a, a like a dubbed cassette of his first couple records. Okay. Now I started listening to country mm-hmm. around the same time I got that. Okay. And so, but that's gave me like a pure like, you know, straight the arm rush. yeah albums worth of straight Garth. And awesome. then, then you're hearing him on the radio, and you're hearing all the the other, you know, Clint Black at the time, and Alan Jackson, and all these guys too. And that's when I just fell in love with like the genre, exactly. But like really learning that Gar stuff was actually a dubbed. And the constant radio. inflow of that stuff was radio. You know, that, oh, yeah. that's how either you got you got influenced by whatever new artist or whatever new song from an old artist that you mm-hmm. like. That are a familiar artist that you like, um, you got influenced directly by the radio or indirectly by the radio because well, your body was like, up. "Dude, check it out!" Yeah, and he heard it on the radio. Oh, and, exactly. Or she heard it on the radio and gave it to you. you and know? that's and that's how I fell in with like Alan Jackson and and everybody else was right. pretty much radio first. So here's the thing: like, it's natural for an intelligent person to say, "Okay, I'm an artist now, and I want to put my music out there, and I want to deconstruct the process." that it came to me mm-hmm. as best I can, right? right? And then mimic it. Yeah. Makes sense, right? Yeah, it does. The problem is, we're at the end of like an 80 year run of where this, because I'll start with this. The formula for blowing up an artist's brand has always been the same since we created art. Get the art and the artist in front of new eyeballs, targeted mm-hmm. eyeballs, which is important, yeah. and let the artist do their thing. Right, and then a small percentage of those eyeballs that are watching that for the first time are going to be like, "That's my jam." Yeah, and so then it's just like the instructions on a shampoo bottle, right? Lather, <laughs> rinse, repeat. Right, yeah, <clears throat> and uh, you just keep doing that. Mm-hmm. The thing is, the method for doing that over time, over hundreds and hundreds of years, has changed multiple ways, mm. right? And we're at the end of a really long eighty-year run where it was the same way and it was super powerful, mm-hmm. okay? So, and we're straddling both of them now. Like at Micah, we're doing radio for some of our artists here, mm-hmm. uh, and also we're doing online marketing, but they're two different animals. Yeah. Completely different species, mm-hmm. and you have to know the difference, or you're gonna very easily and very understandably and naively cross the two and mm-hmm. try to pretend, and it, uh, like, you're gonna like you would like you would market on radio if you try to market your your song on radio the online on social mm-hmm. media it's not gonna work this is like ghostbusters don't cross the streams ray don't cross the streams right what happens if we cross the streams bad things bad, bad things, things ray biblical type stuff <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. so so and this is why so many artists are frustrated and not for nothing so many major label artists are frustrated and major labels are frustrated why the sales are down because they're trying to pretend because social media has the reach that you could argue is even bigger and the internet has reach that's bigger than the radio mm-hmm. I mean, we could reach there's a billion people go on YouTube every day right mm-hmm. um, th- th- that so marketing you need reach and frequency you can get that reach so they feel oh this is another platform we can do it just like radio right but that's not the case it's right. not a broadcast platform do not confuse it with that that's mm. the biggest cardinal sin that artists are making and this is one of the reasons why I can safely tell you and I tell this to all my like future artists that come in that are kicking the tires to see if they're going to come on board with Daredevil is I can tell you that every one of our artists has a bigger social media footprint and, and way more engagement than any major label artist that isn't famous mm-hmm. you know because the way that the labels do this and this is not an indictment of the record labels this is just the way they've done it for 80 years so the culture change is massive they're not thinking like a tech company they're thinking like a record label right, and yeah. when you're online you got to think like a tech company when you're on radio you got to think like a record label yeah okay and and the so they're like their social media accounts grow when we make them famous on radio and make them famous on TV, mm-hmm. and we put them out on tour and we make them famous that way. And they like, and they, oh, this is great. <clears throat> when they're on the ACMs, we'll throw up the hashtag. <clears throat> exactly, which is backwards from what you're going to be able to do as a new artist. Exactly, like they're not. They don't understand. And the proof is in the pudding. Just look at the numbers. Like go, you know, go look at any record label website and go find the artist that you don't know. Go click on them. Look at their look at their social media. Yeah. it's abysmal. Uh-huh. Um, if they're not famous, it's abysmal. It, because they're not using social media as a targeting mechanism and as a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. And so, um, there's, there's. If, if you're confusing the platforms, you're, you're going to try to push 
the music first online. And here's the thing. With radio and TV, the music comes first. That's just the process. I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's any more or less important. But I'm saying when you're driving in the car listening to the radio, what do you hear? The music. Right. There's yeah. nothing to see. <clears throat> so that's what comes across, the song. Back in the day when MTV and CMT and BET had uh, you know, killer music videos that were being mm-hmm. spun on a regular basis, then the music was what you saw and that was what came to you first. Yep. And then what happens is, is you hear it enough times, you get the frequency part of it, right? They reached mm-hmm. you first, then they got the frequency part of it. It starts to sink in. You start to ask questions like, oh, who are, who are these guys? Like, I, I, I want to go, you know, now you're buying influence is starting to, to change, right? right you're starting yeah. to be influenced. You're, getting, you're starting to pull out your credit card. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it's you, TRL. Everyone's liking this song. I'm gonna go like it too. Right. Yeah. Then you go to the. Then you go to the artist. Is what happens, right? Yeah. Like the. So and that feels from the artist perspective and from the label perspective and all the industry perspectives of the publishing companies and the managers, that feels famous. Yeah. Because they're coming to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Online, totally different. Yeah. The opposite of famous, like because. Uh, and here's the deal. Before uh, smartphones, mm-hmm. what were your choices for music to listen to? You had two. I had radio, or I had like TV, like you know CMT or whatever, or what I've already purchased. Yeah. <laughs> so I go to my CD collection. There you go. So let's say you chose to listen to the radio. What were your choices to to listen to? Whatever was in the reach of the antenna. And and let's say you pick one station. And what were your choices to listen to? I've had no choice. It was on or off. It was whatever the program whatever, director yeah, was going to decide. Yeah, whatever's on at the moment. Same right. thing with MTV, CMT, BET, right? Right, yeah. So Didn't um, even have TiVo or DVR where I could fast forward to the ones I wanted. That's right. right. Didn't even have that, yeah. Real time just did. So it now you go online. What are your choices to listen to? I got more choices, Johnny. I got choices. My choices got choices. I got so many choices. Spotify, Pandora, I don't even know where to go. It's slacker. causing me stress. I got so many choices. I don't. My FOMO is kicking my butt. Tyranny of choice. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, but here's the thing. By the way, since we all listen to music, every single consumer wants to hear, just like you, want to hear the same thing. You want to hear your jam. Mm-hmm. And uh, you... You never listen to radio. Nobody ever woke up in the morning and said, I wonder what nondescript artist I've never heard of is going to create a song and it's going to be spun on the radio today. I want to be turned on to him. I, I, I wonder what that's going to be. I wonder when that's going to happen. Yeah. Nobody ever said that. You were listening to the radio to hear your jam. So I want to illustrate the power of what radio did and the way it worked. Mm-hmm. And then I want to talk about how it differs on online. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say it's like, you know, you go to the same restaurants and you order the same thing. Why? Because I know it's good. I know I'm going to like it. I, I could try something else, but I'm not but sure. But hey, bro, I'm don't like fix it. it. Some people live for that. They live to discover. I'm going to go and I'm going to try every flavor milkshake cookout yep. has or whatever. <laughs> Other people are like, no, got my jam. Got it. Yep. Stick with it. That's right. Especially with music. I mean, yeah. there's, no, there's no intrinsic value in art. We've talked about this in prior episodes. You have to create the value in art. It has to be created out of thin air, mm-hmm. um, it, but it, on like a hammer or a shoe or a hat, like where we know, an umbrella. We know what it does, right? And we know that depending on the situation that we're in right now, that value could change, right? right. A bag of ice go mm-hmm. for twenty bucks from a jerk trying to sell it after a hurricane, right? Like, right. Yeah. Uh, but you know, but I mean, we know what we need and, and and what it's worth, but not with art. Art, the value has to be created. So you're starting out. Your art is worthless until mm-hmm. you create the art. So radio would help to do that, right? It's funny. You, you fill out a like a bank statement. You're trying to get a loan. Their assets. You're like, I got these songs that have never been cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, beat it. <laughs> that has no value. <laughs> right, right. Think about, um, you know, if you if you made hammers for a living and you were able to create a distribution deal with. Uh, say with um, Home Depot, boy, that would be a multi-million dollar coup, right? Like that would be a life-changing event. Like your company would blow up from that. Mm -hmm. But you get far better reach and distribution on iTunes when you upload that song to iTunes. How's that work out for you? Like nobody knows. (laughs) So you got to create the value, okay? Mm -hmm. So the thing is the way radio used to work, and it's important to know this so you can understand the difference online, is like let's take 1994, uh, Reba McIntyre releases her 18th studio record. If you have 18 studio records, you're an icon. 
Yeah, you're a rock star. Like yeah. You're at the top of your game in the Hall of Fame of Hall of Famers, right? Yeah. Um, and of course, what would they do when they would release the record? They would release the single first. Could you uh, buy the record yet? No, not no, yet. Not yet. No, not yet. So that single becomes a number one hit. Mm-hmm. And what do you listen to the radio for? Your jam. And the what's jam. your jam? Reba. Fancy. Yeah. Fancy. <laughs> and now that's where you got started, right? But now it's it's an, in the 1994, I can't remember the name of the record, but uh, it might have been the same name, but the single was Why Haven't I Heard From You, the first oh. one. First number one single. So you're listening for the DJ to spin Why Haven't I Heard From You. <laughs> that's right. Because we don't have Spotify. We don't have no. you know, I'm choices. I'm sitting there with my little cassette tape ready to dub it. hope the DJ didn't talk over the intro. That, that's right. And yeah, post wait, it. You wait, don't want him to post wait. up on it because you want to hear that song. And and you can't buy it yet, so you can't own it yet. So you only got one choice for that song. And what happens while you're waiting is there's this new punk that they throw down your throat. Tim McGraw. Who mm-hmm. the hell is he? He's right. not going to amount to nothing. Like, ugh, whatever. It's, you know, uh, uh, Indian, Indian outlaw. outlaw. Goes in one ear and out the other. And then you hear it again. And again. Next thing you know, you've heard it eight times. You're like, you're like wait, that's a Cherokee people. I've, I've that's that really good. Song. Yeah, that's They're really finally, good. Yeah. Now you start to recognize it. Next thing you know, it's a number one. And, and 35 number one. ones later, now Tim McGraw is, well, I think it's more than 35 number ones. Now Tim McGraw is an icon. Yeah. So that's how radio worked. The music came first, and then you went to the artist because you you had to peel that onion and figure it mm-hmm. out, right? MTV, same way. You got a little bit more visuals. We got a lot of visuals stuff on it, but right. still, the music came first. Online, if you try to sell your music online or push your music online, nobody cares yeah. because you're not their jam yet. Right. So you come first. The artist comes first online. Your content has to be about the artist. Mm-hmm. And that's how you blow up your brand, right? Let's take um, Granger Smith, for example. Yep. Uh, Earl Dibbles Jr. Okay, let's just talk about the genius in that. Okay, mm-hmm. he was content marketing. Now this was a dude he couldn't get a publishing deal, couldn't get a record deal. Mm-hmm. Nobody, everybody was shaking him off. He was frustrated, just like you are. Yeah, Go, couldn't get any love up in Nashville. Goes back to Texas, and when, when he and his brother were kids, they they created that little character, Earl Dibbles Jr., who's a mm-hmm. dumb redneck. If you haven't seen Earl Dibbles Jr., look him up on Face or on uh, Instagram. Or on Facebook, he's there. I'm uh, on uh, YouTube because you can see the videos. But uh, Earl's, Earl Dibbles Jr. is a, a, a typical, like, really dumb redneck, ignorant, right. not offensive, not 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 like probably not racist, not or racist or stuff. anything like yes. that. Super funny, moral fabric of America kind of thing. Mm. But dumb. like, he's got the the curved, tattered bill with a hook in it on his on his yeah. on his ball cap, and he's got a, a white. Stained wife beater with blue bib overalls with one shoulder strap hanging off and the yeah. pants on those overalls are rolled up and he's got some combat boots and he's always got a dip in his mouth and a cold beer in his hand and a what the hell just happened look on his face. <laughs> right. Like what? Like, you know, and he's always like, wake up in the morning and I put a dip in and I crack a cold one and I figure out what I'm going to do for the day. Right. Like that's his, that's a, that's a quote, you know? Yeah. And he's putting out, he's putting out uh, content on Facebook with a with a quote that would say like, "Boys, if your girlfriend would rather go mudding than shopping, she's a keeper." Yeah. Or girls, if your boyfriend can't bait a hook, then you got a girlfriend. You know, <laughs> and it's funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he would make these videos, but who's his audience? Country folks. Country folk, because because he's doing country music, right? Yeah, he's doing country music. He's doing country music, and so that's like. There's, there, we got country music fans all over, but primarily like in the South. South yeah. Okay, that's where it all starts. And it's a love letter. He's not making fun of. Right. He's, he's well, it's it's, it's funny. He's laughing with. That's right. right. But, so but, he's not driving off his audience. That's right. He's a tra- he's the Jeff Foxworthy that you might be a redneck. It, boom. Okay. So so there it is. Is he trying to you know listen to my song? No. It's about him. Now, he's doing a caricature. Uh, 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 of right. a, He's clowning. Okay, that's right. just one way to do it. But it, it was shareable. Why was it shareable? Because everybody in the South knows somebody. Right. Like Earl Dibbles Jr. Yeah. So, number one, it was really funny because the dude's brilliant. Okay. Mm-hmm. And number two, like, oh, my gosh, that's your dad. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's your brother. That's your cousin Billy Joe Jimbo. Like, and yeah. share, 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 share. And he and he grows his audience, right? Mm-hmm. Now then, he's playing songs. Mm-hmm. Now that he's now that they're like like him, they're listening to the music. Yeah. And then he grows so big, he gets noticed by CBS Sports 
And CBS Sports says, we want to sign you to a contract and bring you on to do the SEC picks for football season. Oh, so no. now Earl Doubles Jr. is doing that. Yeah. And then just like that, he doubles his audience. And now the record labels well, want to he's him. bringing value to the SEC that, you know, they want Ex- him to bring his audience. Exactly right. Yeah. And, they, and he's perfect. They have the same audience. And he's already proven that they, they're responding to him. Right. right. So now he says, I'm going to be picking the game. To, you know, they're going to tune in to see, oh my God, Cousin Earl's on the TV. And you know, he's saying all the things that you think about your team. He's like, Auburn ain't never going to lose to so, you know, to, to the Seminoles. Like, rah, rah, whatever yeah. that is. Like, he's got, he's got an opinion about it, you know, yeah. and it's the opinion that you would have in that region. Or yeah. So it, it's about, it was about him. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and the artist has to come first. So you need to realize that you need need to come up with content that is relevant and personal to your audience Mm -hmm. that's about you okay and then that's what's going to make it shareable and once they like you then they're going to get turned on to the song but if you're if you're man in i see it in all genres in country in rock and roll in rap like you know everybody's Mm -hmm. check us out we're on itunes or this this boy's spitting mad rhymes in the mic check us out and and they are they're telling you to listen to music and you're like no i got my jams yeah. Like, I don't even know who you are. Yeah. Stop telling me what to do. That's what has to happen. So here's why that exists, okay? Because the content is is consumed differently than radio and TV. Radio and TV are broadcast platforms. Lots of people hear the same thing at the same time, and we all commiserate about mm-hmm. it, right? And there's implied power given to somebody that's on the radio, because it's hard to do. Right. And there's implied power given to somebody that's on TV, because it's hard to do. Mm-hmm. Is there implied power given to somebody that's on social media? No. No. I'm on social media, therefore, yeah. I have no respect for it. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So, so, and... It's consumed through your smartphone, and your smartphone is personal. Mm-hmm. It's personal to you. It's not. Seth Godin, I was listening to a podcast with him, um, and he was talking about internet is not one to many. It's not a media broadcast like a TV. Mm-hmm. You're, you say something from in front of the camera on ESPN, you're talking to many people. That's not internet. That's internet right. is one to one because you're receiving it on your phone. This is, leads perfectly into my next point. And we didn't even so plan let's, this. So let's illustrate that, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's, like, what do we mean by that? Like, what, how, does that, how does that translate when you come into your messaging? Because the messaging has to be different, okay? Mm-hmm. So it is one-on-one. And, and the way I'm going to explain this is it's personal. It's one-on-one. It's as personal as your kitchen table. Mm-hmm. Brent, you've only had three kinds of people at your kitchen table your whole life. I mm-hmm. promise you. <laughs> friends and family is the first kind. Yes. The second kind is friends of friends of family because uh-huh. you're welcome into your house. Right. And the third kind is very rare and occasional, but it's the sales guy. Salesperson. And the only reason the salesperson is there is because he that he or she's got something that you need. Mm. And in the first 30 seconds, you're going to decide whether or not you're going to do business with them based on one thing. Does, he, does that person care about me? Yeah. And salesperson can't come in and hype you. No. Right? Like, you know, I, really, I don't want the salesperson in my house. Right. First of all, I wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be there if I didn't have a problem. Say, or, that, say that one more time. I don't want them in my house. They wouldn't be there at all if I didn't have a problem. And there are two kinds. One is I call them. I got this issue. You know, we want to sell our house. Mm-hmm. Okay. For example, real estate agent. You mm-hmm. call them in. Okay. I don't really want to be doing this. You're going to take my money, but I need you. Or the other thing is the guy that knocks on your door is like, I got these rents off. Water softeners come in and they talk their way in, and then you're like, ah, yeah, just because I'm nice, but I really right. don't want to, and I want you to leave. That's right. And so the hype doesn't work. They can't come in like, we've got, like, you know, our sighting, sighting, sighting is the best in the world. Like, Special you know, like, city. Yeah, no yeah. fun, right? Like, they've got to get a one on one relationship with you. They've got to get you to like them, mm-hmm. and which means that they got to like you first. Okay? Yeah. You're the salesperson. Mm-hmm. You're trying to sell your music. Okay? So you have to approach it like this. So, uh, Here's the best illustration. Like, just take, think about Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you talked about broadcasting being defined as one to many, okay? Mm -hmm. So, a real broadcasting situation is a live show. Mm -hmm. One to many, right? Axl Rose to 100,000 people in a stadium. And hype works, okay? Mm -hmm. Because of social proof. When he says clap, we all clap. He says sing, you all sing. Right. You know, and we we do whatever he says and some of us do it because he said it and most of us do it because everybody else is doing it and we know it's okay and it's the correct behavior so this is like the opposite of that is Axel Rose walks up to you on the street is like does his little crab walk and is like 
clap and sing with me. Right. You're like, <laughs> well, <"Ho-ho." laughs> well, let's go a step further, okay? So, so imagine this. Imagine Axel going, everybody get your cell phones up in the air. Come out. And we all yeah. do it, right? Yeah. So imagine him with the same message in the same tone, but he's on your kitchen table. Yeah, like, yeah. hey, Brad, get your cell phone up in the air. Come out. I am, and I'm dialing nine. You're like, dude, I thought you were off drugs. Like, what happened? Right, yeah. You know, it's it's not only doesn't it work, it is the opposite effect. Yeah. It's a turnoff. Mm. You know, so so when you understand how the uh, the music is, how the messaging is consumed, then you're going to change your messaging to 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 make it about them. That's why we say it's got to be about them. Even vampires know you must invite them in. That's right. There you, there you go. <laughs> so <clears throat> when you're doing one to many, the many come to you. That's radio. Yeah. Okay. And and again, I'm not saying one is better than the other because we do both here. Okay. Yeah. But we got to approach radio one way. Right. And we very intentionally approach digital marketing and social media marketing a different way. I mean, football and basketball are both great sports. But if you go out on the basketball court and tackle somebody, you can get them kicked out. That's right. That's not going to be good. You're going to get a You do that on the football field? Great. Penalty. Yeah. They high five you. Slap you on the butt. Send you. Hit him harder. Right. Exactly. <laughs> different, different rules. You different almost sport. hit him hard enough. Yeah, that's almost. right. Almost. Yeah. So the, the, the thing is... Um, you're gonna have to love them first, and here's and here's another reason why the record industry, you know, is struggling with this is because it doesn't feel famous, right? So if you can imagine, you're all over the radio, you're all over TV, you walk into a cocktail party, what happens? It, whoop, yeah, whoop, you suck all the yeah. air out, and everyone looks at you, and, and, and you're the most famous person in the room, yeah. and they all want to come and talk to you, and that's famous, and that feels really cool. It's good for our ego and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But when you're online, when you're on social media, okay, and let's say uh, you are, uh, let's say you're writing songs with Brent here, and you're a country music artist, and Garth Brooks fans, if you could tour with Garth, they mm-hmm. would love you. Yeah. They would freak out over your music, too, because it's good because you're writing with Brent. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, you, and they would love you. And so there's a few million people online that have raised their hand and said, I love Garth Brooks. Yeah. And you can target them and you can follow them first, Mm -hmm. which doesn't feel famous, right? No, it doesn't. So it's like going into the cocktail party where you can choose who's at the cocktail party. I choose this cocktail party to be nothing but Garth Brooks fans. Yes. And then you're the one who has to go around. Hey, how you doing? I'm 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 Johnny. Nice to meet you. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Hey, Garth, great. Yeah, yeah sure. Garth is, is love, awesome, love right? What nice dress? Like, what's going on? Did you do that TV show last night? Yeah. And you just got to be. You're about them. You, it's about them. Mm-hmm. Okay, but that doesn't feel famous, does it? No. That feels the opposite of famous, mm-hmm. which is why a lot of the artists, if they've been in the system long enough, right? Mm-hmm. Doesn't that doesn't work? Definitely like I don't want it. people to feel like I have time to even follow them. Like why would I follow them? That doesn't feel fame. That could take away from my brand. Yeah. You know? Um, so but it's just a different platform. So when you understand this guys, then you're gonna change your messaging. You're gonna change your approach. You're gonna change your language. You're not gonna be Axel Rose. Don't be Axel Rose standing on the kitchen table going, I spit mad right Check out my song. Like it doesn't work on social media. You can't do that. Okay, but but there's clever ways to make that happen. There's tweaks. There's differences mm-hmm. in languages. I'll give you one value bomb before we wrap this up. Instead of saying somebody click on my song, check us out. First of all, don't send them anywhere to check you out for free, because you never got turned on to any artist. I'm sorry. Don't send them anywhere to check you out and have to pay. Right. Um, don't send them to iTunes. Don't send them to iTunes because you never had to pay. Check me out, Walmart.com. To, to discover what? a new artist. Yeah. yeah. You never had to. You never had to pay to discover a new artist. There's no value there. Yeah. You have to create the value. Don't check you out at the cash register. <laughs> right. So um, make sure you got some kind of free download available. Maybe you're sending them to Spotify. Whatever you want to do. Maybe to YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Maybe to SoundCloud. Like mm-hmm. whatever. But uh, instead of telling them what to do and to check you out, make it about them how can you make it about them well hey thanks so much for the love all the follows this week i appreciate that i want to do something for you here's a free download you i know? mean it could be if, if it fits your brand you know it's veterans day it's memorial day i love the armed forces here's a song just tell me guys how much we appreciate you boom yeah boom let's go you can attach it to a certain appropriate 
You got a song about chocolate. It's National Chocolate Day. You got yeah. I mean yeah, that kind of thing was like, oh, it's appropriate. Yeah, I just want to say thank you. Never ending. Never ending, right? But it's about them. I know you love chocolate, or I know you hate chocolate. One of the two. But you'll like this, and and uh, and then they get to check it out for free and and do that. So these are just like subtle things that we do here at Daredevil to um, to get our artists brands to expand and expand that audience. If you could use some help like this, and all artists need help on this. I'm telling you right Mm. now, like. Um, email me at info at daredevilproduction.com. Production is singular. There is no S. Once again, it's info at daredevilproduction.com. And just put in the title, cons- consultation, okay? You'd be amazed at how much we can customize a plan of attack for you at, for just, you know, simply for, for one hour of work on the consultation so you can do it yourself. If you got a little bit of a budget... But maybe not enough to be like a daredevil artist or something like that, but a little bit of a budget, then maybe we can work out some deals or we can do some some specific marketing for uh, a specific show or a single release or a CD release where we can do some targeted marketing and help you really grow your audience. I think the numbers that that uh, you can reach for really not a lot of money is, is astounding. I, on a previous show, we talked about the stuff we did with Jacob Cade. We spent $200 in a market that he was not being spun in. Uh, This is a rock kid. He's 19 years old. He's a rock guitar god. He's an amazing performer. And we had some, you know, killer live footage of him and, you know, pictures of him on radio tour for social Mm -hmm. proof, like he's out there doing it and all these different things. And um, we had... um, Nobody knew him in Scottsdale. He was opening up for Dokken, which used to be a major label act. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they sold like seven, eight million records, I think. And... um, but he was the first band of, of three, so it was him and then a, a, the the direct support act and mm-hmm. then Dokken. And nobody that means he goes on at eight. Nobody was going to be there. And so yeah. for two hundred dollars, we did some targeted marketing in Facebook within like, and I say targeted like with certain amount of people that like a certain kind of thing within fifty mile radius of that venue. And in for two hundred dollars, we had we had four hundred people show up and watch him perform, and it blew like he blew everybody away. Uh, some people even say Blue Away Dokken, which I believe because George Lynch wasn't in the band anymore, and that's my hero. But I digress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the uh, you know the the club owner here's the proof in the pudding. The club owner was freaking out. Like I can't believe you're you're from he's from Colorado, so that's not a local gig for him. Right. And uh, the club owner was like, Oh my god, like you got to come back, and I want to bring you back in August. Like this was incredible, and just flipped out over the draw that the kid had, at the unknown kid. So imagine what we could do with you. Mm-hmm. in your hometown, right? So, uh, once again, guys, um, if uh, you haven't joined the Climb community, Climb, we talk, uh, uh, search for it on Facebook. We talk about this all the time. Um, we, uh, you know, lots of people help on each other mm-hmm. in the Climb community, which I really dig. Like, it's starting yeah. to happen more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Um, ask, ask away. That's a place where you can get some good marketing, good songwriting information, and you're going you're gonna to get some good feedback from some people. Um, share the show. Share the podcast. If you like it, other people are going to like it, too. It makes you look cool. Take uh, 20 seconds, leave a rating and review on iTunes. That makes us look legit. That's the social proof so that other people know what they're getting into and, and, and subscribe to it so that it automatically comes in there. This podcast exists because we want you to win, guys. That's why Brett and I are doing this, so keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top.